good morning uh, viewers good morning uh, viewers uh, in the previous uh, classes we have uh, learned the behavior of uh, slap in particularly the behavior of uh, one way slap behavior of uh, two way simply supported and two way restrained uh, slap so we have uh, also designed uh, even uh, the design of one way and uh, two way slabs also so what we can just conclude from the previous uh, sessions were to summarize so in case of uh, one way slab so the slab predominantly bends in uh, one direction and the entire load is going to be transferred through the shorter direction that is to longer uh, edges of the slab so whereas in case of uh, two way slab so the load will be shared between the support so if the aspect ratio of the slab is uh, 1 then 50 percent of the load will be shared by the opposite edges as the aspect ratio increases from 1 so the load transfer also changes so as the aspect ratio is more than 1 so more percentage of load is going to be transferred to the shorter direction that is the longer wall as the aspect ratio approaches to the entire load will be transferred through the shorter direction that is to the longer uh, wall so that is one of the important uh, thing what you need to understand so coming to the two way restrained uh, slab so in two way restrained slabs when the slabs are restrained that is when the slab is caused monolithic with the beam then the positive moments are going to be reduced and in turn so you are going to get the negative moment as well as you are going to get the torsional uh, moments also so to take care of this negative bending moment and torsional moment you are going to just provide the steel at the top near the support as well as you need to just provide the reinforcement to take care of uh, the torsion that is in the form of mats that is at the corners in the form of uh, mesh now today we are going to just discuss uh, a very important type of uh, slab what we call as uh, one way continuous uh, slab which is very common in uh, commercial buildings where the column free surface is uh, required. Now generally if you just look at uh, the plan of a uh, uh, hall now these are the walls. if this one of the dimension if it is in the range of say 5 to 9 meter and if the other dimension is pretty large okay so what you can do is you can just divide the slab into number of uh, parts like this so this dimension generally will be the, the multiples of uh, 3 to 5 meter right so in this direction you can just go any long uh, dimension you can have a column here or you can just rest this beam directly on the uh, wall now here the slab predominantly spans in the shorter uh, direction so when the slab spans in the shorter direction and if it is continuous over the support so we normally call this entire slab system as one way continuous uh, system here basic thing which is very essential is now if you consider each panel the ratio of this to this it should be more than uh, 2 that is if you divide this by this so the ratio should be more than uh, 2 right so if the ratio is less than 1 each panel will be treated as independent and it will be designed as two way restrained uh, slab so since each panel is a one way panel and since it is continuous over support you can just span the slab over the supports and is called as one way continuous slab here the basic thing which is very essential here is so generally these spans so if you just look at uh, the section so it is something like this now these are called the spans these are generally called the spans so these spans could be even 3 or 4 or 5 or it could be any number of spans in this direction so this is generally recommended wherein you need a clear column free surface now we'll just see how you exactly you can design these type of uh, slab in the present uh, class so the learning outcome in today's class are introduction to one way continuous slab 
behavior of one way continuous slab, design requirements as per IS 456 2000 and design of we will take one typical example of uh, one way continuous slab and we will uh, design uh, that. Now, coming to the behavior, these slabs generally as I told you spans in one direction and continues over number of uh, supports and we call them as one way continuous slab. So, they can be idealized as continuous beam of unit uh, width. So, for slab which support substantially uniformly distributed load and span do not differ by more than 15 percent of the longest, the bending moment and shear force can be obtained using the coefficient. So, as I told you, so if you just take the spans that is L of each panel, they should not differ by more than 15 percent of the longest. So, the moments and uh, support moments and uh, shear force can be just calculated using the coefficients uh, given. So, if the spans are unequal, then you can always take the average of the two values at the negative uh, for the negative moments at uh, supports. Alternatively, the moments can always be obtained using the moment distribution or any other uh, structural analysis uh, procedure. Now, this is how the slab is going to behave especially when they are uh, continuous. So, the same behavior you can uh, expect even in case of continuous beam also. Now, if you just look at uh, this is a slab of uh, width uh, equal to 1 meter and uh, this is the thickness you can see here. So, these are the predominant uh, crack pattern what you are going to get when they are subjected to ultimate uh, load. So, you do get tension here and you get tension at uh, the supports as well as at the span. So, it is very essential that you need to provide the reinforcement here wherever you get the tension. So, that is what I have uh, shown. So, if you just look at the bending moment diagram. So, this is the bending moment diagram what you get and this is how we normally provide the steel. So, steel has to be provided near the spans as well as near the support. So, we normally call these spans as these moments as span moments that is these moments and these moments are normally called as the support moments. Now, we will take one uh, typical uh, example. Uh, of a one way continuous uh, slab. Now, you have a hall of clear dimension 14.1 meter into 9.7 meter. So, this is 9.7 meter and this is 14.10 meter. This has to be provided with a flow consisting of a continuous uh, slab cast monolithic with 300 millimeter wide uh, beam. So, these are the beams right. So, the width of the beams is 300 uh, millimeter, the floor has to be support, uh, the floor has to support a live load of uh, 3 kilo Newton per meter square that is a live load and a partition load of 1 kilo Newton per meter square and finishes at 1 kilo Newton per meter square. So, this is generally the standard load what you normally get uh, for a slab. So, as I told you in the earlier classes also the live load will be in the range of 2 to 4 kilometer depending on the occupancy of the building right. So, the partition load you can take roughly 1 kilo Newton per meter square. So, that is to take care of uh, the walls. So, that normally in case of these halls. So, you can uh, have a main wall only on these beams. So, but you can always build the partition wall anywhere on the slab. So, that is to take care of uh, the load due to partition normally an alliance of 1 kilo Newton per meter square is generally considered and that is the finishers. So, that is due to uh, flooring and uh, other uh, aspect that is a round 0.6 to 1 kilo Newton per meter square. Now, we will design the slab considering M 20 grade of concrete and uh, Fe 4 and 5 uh, steel. Now, this is the plan what I have told. Now, here this can be idealized as considering 1 meter strip of uh, the slab. So, this width is 1 meter and the slab is we have we generally take the slab in this direction. So, we the slab is supported at these uh, points. Now, this is how the idealized uh, picture uh, looks right. So, I have taken a slab. So, which is supported at this point and this is exactly similar to a continuous uh, beam. 
the only difference between a continuous beam and a continuous slab is so in case of continuous beam the b is generally in the range of 200 to 300 millimeter whereas here in case of slab the width of the b slab is fixed that is uh, always it is 1000 millimeter or 1 uh, meter okay so the behavior of uh, this uh, one way continuous slab and behavior of continuous beam are almost uh, same here one thing what you need to clearly note here is so as per the codal provision so uh, these are called the spans so these spans generally should be almost uh, same so code says that so the difference that is uh, the if, if this is l1 and this is l2 so what the code uh, says is so whenever you use the coefficient so the difference should not be more than 15 percent of the longest say for example if all these three spans are around 3 3 meter and if one is 3.5 meter so then it is okay so the difference will not exceed uh, uh, 15 percent so you can clearly say that so the range of uh, spans permitted are in the range of 3 to 3.5 meter one could be 3 meter another could be 3.2 or 3.5 so the span cannot be more than 3.5 or it cannot be even less than 3 meter also so if that condition is satisfied and also this entire slab is subjected to predominantly uniformly distributed uh, load then the bending moment and shear force can be obtained using the coefficient if they are different then what exactly you have to do it so code does not give you any coefficient because you need to resort for any standard structural analysis procedure so you need to just do the moment distribution or slope deflection method what you have already learnt in your previous uh, semesters in uh, statically in structural analysis uh, too so you need to just calculate the distribution factors and you need to divide uh, the you need to just uh, distribute the moment so depending on the stiffness of uh, the member so that is if these spans are say one is 3 meter and there is 6 meter another is 4 meter or something like that so then you cannot use the coefficients coefficients given in uh, is uh, 456 so those coefficients are applicable only if the spans are almost the same and they are subjected to con subjected to uniformly distributed uh, load so that is one thing what you need to clearly note whenever you use the coefficients uh, given so these coefficients are given only to assess the designer wherein if they are almost equal you do not really require a structural analysis tool you can calculate the bending moment directly using the coefficients given in the table so that is the advantage of uh, giving the table otherwise you can always uh, resort to a structural analysis procedure and calculate the moment in a classical uh, using any classical approaches now the first step as we have already seen that is uh, to fix up the trial uh, depth so as i told you already so you need to just consider one meter width of the slab and the effective span shall be taken equal to center to center of the beam here i have taken this span as uh, center to center distance of the uh, beams right so that is uh, 3.6 uh, meter now the trial depth generally can be assumed in two ways so one you can use the l by d ratio which is generally taken from based on the experience or based on the thumb rule you can take uh, the l by d ratio for a continuous lab as l by 30 so remember or so l by d can also be obtained using uh, this particular uh, method which is generally given in the code and many textbooks normally follow this particular uh, procedure so what you can do is assume first percentage of steel in the range of 0 0.2 to 0.3 percent for steel and for that corresponding modification factor can be picked right so taking fs is equal to 1 so if you take modification factors 1.2 so basic l by d ratio for a continuous slab and for restrained slabs you can take it as 26 you multiply that 26 by 1.2 so and uh, this comes out to be d 115 uh, millimeter so anyway either you can adopt this method or you can directly take the depth as l by 30 or even if you are quite confident of taking the depth based on the spans you can always uh, assume some depth so here so this is only for assuming the depth so this is only a thumb rule which is given because you are assuming the percentage of steel also so because you will not be knowing like what percentage of steel you are going to use later right so all these are 
assumed uh, value. So, you can blindly assume any value based on the span and you can proceed, right. So, as you know that basically reinforced design is a trial and error procedure. So, if you get a depth which is not sufficient, you can always uh, modify. So, in the trial uh, we will assume a depth which is equal to 150 millimeter and we will assume a bar diameter which is equal to 10 mm. So, nominal cover as I already told you it is 15 millimeter for a mild uh, exposure right. So, your effective depth comes out to be uh, 150 minus 15 that is the cover and uh, the half the diameter of the bar it is 10 by 2. So, it comes out to be 130 millimeter. Now, coming to the load on uh, slab, here there is one small difference between uh, how you calculate the load for a continuous slab and for other types of uh, slab. Here, so since the coefficients have been given for dead load and live load separately. So, it is different coefficients are given for dead as well as live load. So, you need to just bifurcate clearly dead load separately and live load separately. So, as I told you dead load uh, cons dead load uh, include the dead weight of the slab and the floor finishes and the load due to partition. So, the con these constitute the dead load and live load generally depends on the functional aspect. So, you will have only one uh, value for that. So, only for dead load. So, it may be of uh, self weight as well as floor finish on partition. So, these things are not given. You can straight away take self weight of the slab and uh, proceed and normally floor finish is generally added to that. So, if you add the self weight of the slab, floor finish and the partition. So, it comes out to be 5.75 kilo Newton per meter square. So, always this is the pressure loading. So, you consider a 1, 1 meter by 1 meter area and you are going to calculate the load on that particular area. So, that is the reason why we have just written it as kilo Newton per meter square. So, I have just calculated separately the factor dead load. I am just calling it as W D. So, and I am just calculated uh, factor live load. So, that is W L. So, if you calculate, so you get 8.625 and 4.5 as the dead load and uh, live load. Now, the next thing is uh, look at uh, the behavior of uh, a continuous uh, beam or a continuous uh, slab. So, if you just look at uh, the behavior, now this is approximately if you take uh, almost the spans of the four spans as almost same and if you look at the bending moment diagram uh, of drawn right. So, you can clearly say that. So, these are the negative bending moments, uh, so these are the positive spanning span moment and these are the negative uh, bending moment. Now, if you just look at uh, the positive uh, bending moment that is the span moment. Now, uh, generally these are called the end spans and these are called the intermediate spans. So, two terminology. So, these are this span and this spans are treated as end span and these are called the interior uh, spans. Now, so these are called the span moments and these are called the support moments. So, support moments are at top and span moments are at the bottom. Now, if you just look at the span moments at the exterior and interior span. So, the span moment at the end or at the exterior panel are much much larger than the span moments in the interior uh, panel. Right. So, similarly the support moments next to the end support are much much these two are larger than the intermediate uh, support. So, that is the reason why the code gives you different coefficients for different bending moment at different uh, location. Right. So, Gen this this can be I mean even if it is uh, say if instead of 4 if you have 5. So, this interior panel you will have you get 2 interior uh, negative moment uh, supports right. So, accordingly the code gives you different coefficients. So, that is near middle of end span. So, this is end span this is middle. So, that is this is the span moments positive moment. So, the bending moment here is 1 W D by L square into L square right. So, whereas plus you need to add the bending moment due to dead load plus bending moment due to live load. So, it gives different coefficients for dead load and it gives different coefficients for live load. Okay. So, if you add these two I get the total bending moment at this particular point. Then at middle of uh, interior uh, span. So, that is at these points. 
So, at this point, so a slightly a lower value of uh, bending moments have been uh, prescribed. So, uh, that is the reason why has given uh, these uh, coefficients in the denominators are slightly more when compared to these uh, uh, values. So, it comes out to be 1 over 16 for dead load and 1 over 12 for uh, uh, live load. Now, coming to the support moments at these points, again these at support next to the end support. Now, these supports are treated as end supports and these are called the supports next to the end support. So, here this end supports the bending moment is 0 because that end is treated as simple support. So, normally when the slab rests on the wall, so you can assume that the bending moment at that point is almost uh, 0. Right. So, at support next to the end support, so it gives the coefficient as 1 over 10 for dead load and 1 over 9 for uh, live load, whereas at all other intermediate uh, supports, interior support, so it gives you the coefficient which is equal to 1 12th and 1 9. Now, so strictly speaking, you will be getting the bending moment at 4 points 1, 2, 3, 4. So, these are the 4 locations wherein you need to calculate the bending moment using these uh, coefficients uh, given. Now, if you just uh, use uh, the same coefficient and if you substitute the corresponding uh, value of dead load and if you substitute the corresponding value of uh, live load, so you will be getting these uh, values. So, bending moment at middle of end span, bending moment at middle of interior spans, right. So, and bending moment near the end support. So, these two are the negative moments and these two are the positive uh, moment. So, now, you need to just check after obtaining the bending moment, you need to check the depth required from the bending moment consideration. Now, since you have got uh, four different values of bending moment, so normally the depth is checked for the maximum uh, bending moment. Out of the four, so pick the maximum uh, bending moment, so that is 17.66. So, generally the support moments are normally the maximum uh, compared to other uh, things, the especially the bending moment near bending moment which is next to the end support is generally the maximum. So, if you just substitute uh, the corresponding bending moment here and as I have already told, so mu is equal to 0 0.138 f c k b into d square. If you compute d from that, so this coefficient primarily depends on the grade of uh, steel. So, since we are using the grade of steel as 4 on 5, so you can use 0 0.138 as the coefficient. So, if you calculate the depth required from bending moment criteria, you require a depth which is just equal to 80 millimeter uh, only. So, anyway, so the depth what you have provided is 130, which is much, much higher than what is, uh, which is much less than what is uh, required. Coming to the area of uh, the reinforcement, from the practical consideration, so generally as I have already told, so the bending moments are different at different, different locations, but you cannot vary the spacing at different uh, location. So, normally the spacing is calculated only at two location, one for the span moment and one for the support uh, moment. So, that is especially for the end span we calculate and we normally provide the same steel for all the supports and same steel for all the span. So, this is generally adopted whenever the number of spans are uh, 3 or 4 or 5. So, if the number of spans are pretty more, so if the number of spans of 6 or 7 or something like that, then you can definitely alter uh, the span uh, steel as well as the support uh, steel. Anyway, from the from this particular problem point of view and from the examination point of view, what you can always do is you can just calculate the steel at two locations. So, one for the positive steel and one for the negative steel, pick the maximum positive uh, bending moment and pick the maximum negative bending moment and provide the same steel at bottom and provide the required steel to resist the negative bending moment at all the support. So, that is what I have uh, adopted in this particular uh, problem. So, I have just calculated the area of steel which is required at the middle of end span. So, I have used the same expression, I have substituted the corresponding bending moment and I have obtained the steel. So, that is 341 millimeter uh, square. 
So, if I calculated the spacing of 8 millimeter bar, so the spacing comes out to be 146 millimeter, I have just round off to a slightly a lower value, so that is 8 mm at 145 center to center, so the amount of steel comes out to be 346, so this should be slightly more than what is uh, required. So, similarly, I have just calculated uh, the steel at uh, the support. So, when I, if I substituted the corresponding negative bending moment in the same expression, so on solving this quadratic equation, so if you solve this equation uh, for AST as I have already discussed, you get a quadratic in AST, if you solve AST you get two values, so out of the two values you pick uh, the correct uh, or the relevant uh, one. So, solving you get AST negative comes out to be 402 millimeter uh, square. So, here what I have done is I have just used some uh, combination that is 8 mm at 280 center to center and 10 mm at 280 center to center. Here I have uh, done specifically this in order to explain this fundamental uh, thing which is normally adopted in uh, detailing. Now, if you just look at uh, the slab, these are the supports, these are the support. So, I have just calculated uh, the steel required here. This steel is 8 at uh, 145 center to center. So, this steel comes out to be 140, uh, 140 center to center, right. Now, if I calculated the steel which is required at this particular uh, support, so for the given steel, so the area of steel required is 402 millimeter square. If I say use 8 mm only, then I get a steel which is equal to 8 at say 125 center to center. Now, you can provide if you provide a detailing something like uh, this. So, I can just vary the reinforcement here and I can vary the reinforcement at this particular location, right. So, anyway there is no connection between this steel and this steel. Now, this is one way of uh, providing the detailing in case of one way continuous uh, slab. The basic drawback of this particular uh, method is Right. So, to support this particular steel which is provided at the top, you need some additional chairs to support that particular steel. So, it is not as like uh, beams what you have uh, the steel ups. So, here you cannot support these steel on A. So, you need some supports from the bottom. So, sometimes they provide in the form of chair to support the steel at the top. So, this is one way of doing it. The other way of uh, providing the reinforcement is this is very popular as far as uh, the from the practical point of view is uh, concerned, right. So, what normally we do is, right. So, this is we are providing 8 at 140 center to center. So, the best way generally we adopted in case of slab is we normally provide what is known as the cranking of uh, bar. So, here the steel is required, so that steel has been provided say 8 at 140 center to center. So, this steel has been uh, provided, so that is at 8 at, so this is the required steel at uh, center of uh, the center of this pan, so that is 8 at 140. Now, here if I just crank, here the spacing of this is 8 at 280 center to center, because alternate bars are crank, ok. Now, look at the required uh, steel at uh, top, so the required steel at top is 402 millimeter square. Right, so, the required steel is 402 millimeter square. Now, what you can do is you deduct the area of steel which has already been provided uh, by cranking of the steel and you provide additional uh, steel at the top like this. This is the additional steel what you can uh, do, right. So, this is very convenient way. So, since the area of steel required is generally be more at this point compared to this. So, since you have used 8 mm here, so it is very essential that you can go for 10 mm bar at 
double the spacing so that it is very convenient uh, for you to do it. So, since I have used 140 here, so try 8 at uh, 140 double that is 8 at 280 and 10 at 280. So, if you calculate the spacing or if you calculate the steel for 8 at 280 and 10 at 280, so I have just calculated I got an a spacing of uh, I got a steel which is equal to 460 millimeter square. So, that is definitely greater than what is required. So, even then it since even then is slightly greater than what is required. So, this way of providing the area of uh, this way of providing uh, the steel in the form of bent up bar is very common in the practical from the practical uh, point of view. Now, also you can calculate the area of steel using uh, the SP 16. So, that is you have uh, an SP 16 uh, you can directly take, uh, but anyway from the examination point of view always it is very essential that you calculate the area of steel using uh, the formula which I have already told. So, but as a for a check you can always uh, use this uh, SP 16 right. So, knowing the bending moment, so knowing the bending moment you can calculate directly using this particular uh, table. So, you can uh, select a chart which is relevant to your uh, design detail. So, I am using uh, FCK 20, I am using uh, FY 415, but the only drawback of these charts is, so these charts have been given for a particular value of depth of slab. So, if the depth of slab is say 150 millimeter, so here the depth is given in terms of centimeter, right. So, anyway you can directly use, so your depth it comes in the range what they have given. So, the because tables have been given for 130 millimeter, 140 millimeter, 150 after 150 the codes I mean uh, SP 16 has given a chart for 175 millimeter. So, if your depth is 160 millimeter you cannot use these uh, charts. So, while selecting this depth itself if you are careful enough you can select the depth which are available in the SP 16. So, that uh, trick you can always uh, use right. So, anyway if the depth is 15 uh, millimeter, so you can directly select the spacing as well as the diameter of the bar directly. So, if your bending moment is around say 15 kilo Newton meter, so here you have two options. So, one is say for you just search 15, so if you are using 8 mm you can use the spacing which is equal to 8 at 150 center to center. If you are using 10 mm, so you can just go for 10 mm at 230 center to center. Likewise, you can just keep changing the diameter of the bar and spacing of the bar depending on the moment of uh, resistance. And again, especially in case of uh, continuous uh, slab wherein you need to just alter uh, the spacing that is whenever you wanted to double the spacing and you have checking. So, you can always uh, make use of uh, this. So, you can just check 8 at 240 and 10 at 240 and if you add this moment of resistance you should get the desired uh, bending moment. So, in that way you can easily check using these uh, tables and later you can just show the calculations. So, this is if this is the other table where you can always uh, directly calculate the spacing if you know the steel. So, that is if I know the area of steel which is required I can calculate directly the spacing using these uh, table. So, if I after I calculate the area of steel uh, using the equation I can directly calculate the required spacing by assuming suitable bar diameter and spacing. If the area of steel required is 5.5 or 5.6 centimeter square, I can choose 10 mm at 140 center to center or if I go for 8 mm, I need to just use the spacing which is equal to 8 at uh, 90 center to center. As I already told you from the practical point of view, so it is not generally, it is not uh, generally, uh, I mean it is better to use the spacing which is generally greater than uh, 80 millimeter as the spacing though the code does not say anything about the minimum uh, spacing. In that angle, so these tables are very useful otherwise 
after you calculate after you assume the diameter if the spacing comes out to be less than say 80 millimeter then you need to just again recalculate the spacing required for a higher uh, bar diameter. So, in the beginning you can just check by looking at the table. So, which diameter of the bar suits to your requirement and then you can just show the calculation for the corresponding uh, uh, diameter and uh, the spacing. So, in that way these uh, tables uh, helps you in arriving the desired quantities quickly or uh, conveniently. Then finally, the distribution steel is calculated at 0.12 percent of uh, the gross area. So, that is if I just calculate 0.12 percent. So, here care should be excess see that uh, you need to just take the overall depth of the slab that is 1000 millimeter into 150. So, that is overall depth. So, it comes out to be 180. So, 180 millimeter square. So, spacing is 8 mm at 277 millimeters at center to center. So, if you just look at the previous chart. So, for uh, a value which is equal to 18 millimeters 18 1.8 centimeter square. So, if you just look at it 1.8 centimeter. So, 8 mm at 280 center to center. So, that is what I have uh, provided here. So, directly you can use those uh, charts for calculating the spacing. Then uh, you need to just check for the deflection. So, check for deflection can always be done using L by D equations. So, steel provided the mid span is generally considered. The steel provided at mid span is 340 millimeter. The percentage of steel comes out to be 0.26 percent. The design stress F s is equal to 0.58 into 415. So, this ratio depends on the steel provided and steel required. So, since almost I have provided the same steel as that of the required steel. So, that value comes out to be 1. So, the design stress is F s is equal to 240. So, for 240 right. So, for the uh, given for the obtained percentage of steel. So, if you calculate the modification factor. So, the modification factor comes out to be 1.52. So, I can just uh, your L by D allowable is L by D basic is 26 for continuous slab. So, 26 into K 1 gives you 39.5. So, I if you calculate L by D actual. So, this L by D actual is L is 3600 and D is 130. So, it comes out to be 27.6. So, your uh, L by D actual is less than L by D allowable. Now, in case Okay. In case if uh, this is uh, less than this, okay. So if this is less than this, so then what you can do is so there is one way of uh, achieving uh, that. If you just look at uh, the modification factor for compression uh, steel, so for any percentage of uh, compression uh, steel, right? So the modification factor is greater than uh, one. Right. So, you assume some percentage of compression steel right, and you provide that uh, compression steel for the slab in the compression uh, region. Right. So, if you provide the steel in the compression uh, region, so you this value will be increased. So, if at all if this value comes out to be less than this, so you can always increase this value by providing the compression steel. So, thus compression steel assist you in reducing the deflection. So, that is one point what you have to clearly note. So, you can always provide the compression steel to reduce the uh, deflection. So, these are the basic L by D ratios given and uh, K 1, K 2, K 3 what I have already told in the previous uh, classes. Now, coming to the check for uh, shear again for calculating the shear also code gives you the coefficients for calculating the shear. So, shear at various supports. So, again uh, shear is uh, calculated at all the points that is at all the four locations. So, that is at supports uh, and at support next to end supports and at all other interior uh, support. So, shears are calculated at all the supports using the corresponding uh, coefficients. Now, if you just look at 
uh, the thing. So, I have just calculated the shear force only at support next to end support. So, generally this is the maximum one what you normally get. So, if you check for the maximum shear force, so it is just uh, sufficient. Here it is on since you are doing only check for the shear, right. So, you can always pick the maximum uh, shear force out of the four values. So, the maximum value comes out to be the shear which is you are going to get at support next to the end uh, support. So, that comes out to be 0 0.6 times uh, the dead load into span right plus 0 0.6 times the live load into span. So, this comes out to be 28.35 kilo Newton. So, the nominal shear stress comes out to be B u by B d. So, this is exactly similar to what we have done in one way slab. So, B is 1000 millimeter and D is 130. So, this comes out to be 0 0.22 Newton per millimeter uh, square. So, for M 20 grade concrete with P t 0.35. So, tau c comes out to be 0 0.4 Newton per millimeter uh, square. So, this is you can directly refer the chart. So, this clearly tells you that allowable stress that is the my allowable shear stress in concrete is 0 0.4 that is the concrete can take a shear stress which is equal to 0 0.4. So, this is definitely larger than what is required. So, the thing is uh, concrete itself can take care of the entire uh, shear stress. So, if this value comes out to be less than this, then definitely it is very essential for you to just increase the depth. However, there is one uh, thing additional thing what you can always uh, take care is. So, if this is slightly uh, less than this. So, code says that only for slabs so, you cannot use this for beams. So, if only for slabs. So, the shear strength additional shear resistance is always there for slabs based on uh, the experiments it has been found that the slab resist uh, a higher value of uh, shear str strength right. So, the shear strength of slabs are generally greater than the shear strength carrying capacity of concrete alone. So, it is equal to k times uh, tau c. So, k is 1.3 depends on the thickness. So, 150 right. So, the k value is 1.3. So, the for m 20 grade with p t that. So, tau c is not 0.4 still you can increase it to 0 0.52. If this itself is more than that, you do not need to do that. If it is slightly less than that, you can check this and make sure that. So, this value should never be greater than this. If this value is greater than this, you need to just provide the, you need to just increase the depth. Finally, check for uh, cracking. So, since steel is more than 0 0.12 percent of uh, the gross area, so spacing of steel uh, and uh, spacing of steel is less than uh, 3D and diameter of the bars are used is only 8 and uh, 10 mm and are uh, and are much less than uh, the total depth by 8 that is 19 millimeter. So, you do not uh, need to worry about the cracking. So, cracking has been uh, taken uh, K right. So, finally, the reinforcement uh, details uh, look like uh, this right. So, here so, what you have to clearly note is I have just provided uh, the 8 mm at 145 center to center in the straight direction right. So, that is alternately these bars have been uh, cranked like that right. So, the steel required is alternate bars are uh, cranked. So, here the detailing requirement says that right. So, 50 percent of the reinforcement can be curtailed at point uh, 15L from the discontinuous edge and uh, point uh, this should be 0.25 L from the uh, continuous uh, edge okay. and uh, minimum 3.3 uh, times uh, L uh, reinforcement for a length which is equal to 0.3 times uh, L or 0.25 times L has to be con provided for the negative uh, reinforcement. So, the additional negative steel has been provided by 10 mm the spacing of which is double the spacing of that. So, it is 8 at 290 center to center. So, here actually you have 8 at 290 center to center and 10 at 290 center to center. So, that area totally it comes out to be greater than uh, required. So, this top steel that is 10 mm bar have to be provided just above the straight uh, steel. So, the spacing of the steel both at top as well as at the bottom are almost uh, same. So, this is ideal way of adjusting the spacing and the bar diameter in case of slab. So, generally the spacing in the negative and positive are not varied too much. So, that is one uh, point 
what you need to clearly note in case of uh, uh, one way continuous uh, slab right so one more uh, thing generally which uh, and an additional information as far as uh, the two way slabs are uh, concerned so here in case of one way continuous slab if the spans are uh, different it is very essential that you need to just go for uh, moment distribution because so here the code says that it is equal to 0.25 l right so but sometimes sometimes if the spans are uh, different so you may get a situation wherein you get only positive you got only negative moment or you get only positive moment so this length is not always equal to 0.25 l you cannot use that rule for all types of uh, slabs wherein if the spans are uh, different so sometimes you may get a bending moment wherein the entire region is subjected to uh, moment something like this if you just look at uh, picture so sometimes you do get if these are the supports right if these are the support so i may get a situation wherein right so if this is uh, right so this negative moment is sometimes is very very small right so you may get even a bending moment in this particular way also right so in those situation so it is very essential that you have to be very careful so you cannot uh, uh, think that so sometimes you may get a huge value of negative moment like that so this distance is very important so this cannot be always taken as 0.3 times uh, so sometimes this distance is more than 0.3 l because you need to extend the negative still still the point of uh, contra flexure right you need to extend the reinforcement beyond uh, the point of contra flexure so nowadays you have lot of soft ways which are available so using the soft ways you can always check where exactly you have the uh, point of contra flexure and you can uh, do the reinforcement and as far as the two way slabs are uh, concerned the additional information what the code says is so whenever the two slabs meets wherein if you calculate uh, the moments which comes out to be different say for example you have uh, two slabs so here this is one panel and this is one panel so if you calculate the bending moment here so if this span is l1 and if this span is uh, l2 so if you definitely use the coefficients given so you get a negative moment which is uh, different at these two point so one way of uh, tackling this is you can just take the maximum of these two and uh, put the reinforcement accordingly but as far as the code is concerned so what the code says is so you can always uh, do the procedure what the code says so you can just add these two moment and arrive a value which is six. so numerically you add so if this value is say 20 and if this value is 10 so if this value is 12 okay so that is something like that so if you add positive and negative moment you get a moment which is equal to 30 kilo newton then you try to just distribute these two moments something similar to moment uh, distribution so something similar to moment distribution so after distributing so you get a moment which is equal to say 15 okay so the, if you get a moment which is equal to 15 so you design this support moment for a moment which is equal to 15 and positive moment shall be calculated just by deducting this from the negative total uh, moment that is 13 minus 15 comes out to be 15 only so that is how you can just tackle in case of uh, the two way restraint slabs wherein if the moments are uh, different so uh, i mean you have one last bit which is uh, cantilever uh, slab so generally the procedure is exactly similar to one way slabs so wherein the cantilever slabs which uh, the, this is generally treated as the slab uh, span so you consider one meter uh, width of uh, the slab like this so on, the only difference between uh, cantilever slab and uh, a regular uh, one way slab is we calculate the bending moment as w l square by 2 and shear force is w into l so uh, uh, once you calculate the bending moment and shear force so rest of the procedure is exactly same only thing is the detailing is slightly different so you need to provide the steel reinforcement at the top and one important care you need to take is the lead distance from here to here is equal to the development uh, length so this is uh, the care what you need to consider in case of uh,
two I mean one one way uh, cantilever uh, slab. So the most important thing is so this development uh, length concept will not arise in other uh, slab only in case of cantilever slab. So you do get this uh, development length uh, concept. So development length is the length of uh, the bar which is required on either side of the support for developing the full strength in the reinforcement through bond. So, you need to have the development length on both the sides so, because this is the section where you get the maximum bending moment on both the side of this section you need to have a length which is any on this side you do not need to bother on this side the total length available should be equal to LD. So, it is very essential that the entire bar has to be taken in this particular way to arrive uh, the negative uh, to arrive the development length uh, criteria or if there is a span on the adjacent side also you can take the reinforcement uh, at top for a length which is equal to LD in the adjacent uh, span like that and 50 percent of the steel can be curtailed at this particular point and remaining 50 can be taken till this uh, end because bending moment is 0 here and you get the maximum bending moment at top. So, whenever it is required to reduce the deflection you can always provide the compression reinforcement at the uh, bottom. So, this is how you can just do the detailing in case of uh, a cantilever uh, slab. So, to these are one or, one or two simple assignments you can always uh, work out right. So, since uh, uh, we have not covered the design of cantilever slab. So, you can design a cantilever slab for an overhang which is equal to 1.2 meter. So, it carries a live load which is equal to 2 kilo Newton per meter square and flow finish is 1 kilo Newton per meter square. So, this is one problem. So, the second problem is so, I have just given the room dimension you design an RC slab for these three condition. One is you assume that the slab is simply supported on all the wall. So, that is one type and the second condition is you assume that the slab is supported on the beams. So, wherein the you assume that the all the four edges are discontinuous that is you have an indep independent room. So, in the third case is you have a slab which is supported on the beam and you can assume that all the four edges are continuous where you have taken an interior uh, panel. So, if you just look at uh, if you calculate the bending moment and try to just uh, compare the values of bending moment obtained in all these uh, three cases. So, with this we will uh, wind up uh, this particular session that is uh, the design of uh, continuous slabs and also the design of uh, slabs. Thank you very much. Uh.